Guys, let's go to the Book of Acts. From the chapter 20 and verse 17. Chapter 20 from the Book of Acts. And verse 17. Verse 17. For Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know, the first day that I came to Asia, in one matter I always lived among you. Serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. How I kept nothing that was helpful but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly, uh, publicly from, from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, now I go bound in the spirit of Jerusalem, <clears throat> not knowing the things that would happen to me there, <clears throat> except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying, and the chains of tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy in the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, I will see my face no more. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have covered in no one's silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who were with me. I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke that they would not see or they would see his face no more and they accompanied him to the ship amen paul the servant of the lord jesus christ a persecutor and insulter and blasphemer it was the fear trembling of the first christian church in Jerusalem, not alone in Jerusalem, by his conduct, his works, with his hatred, 
in his wrath as he considered that he was serving serving all God by persecuting and chasing hunting down the church and persecuting the Nazarenes the uh, sect of the Nazarenes that's what he thought but he did that as he confessed himself in uh, infidelity the Christians would view him as a beast but God viewed him as a servant according to his heart he was going to do everything according to the heart of God a servant and his servitude and bondship to God was going to be afflicted greatly for the service of God his affliction in his service to God and affliction in the service of the church everybody who wants to live in reverence they're going to be persecuted how much more the servants are made servants of God and so it came to an edge the turn of events when the whole Ephesus turned against Paul and his companions they had worked with zeal in the work of God but God was doing that work really for the salvation of souls as the message of the gospel was heard in all of Asia but the time came of the absolute trial sorrow and affliction so that Apostle Paul he would say in boldness I despair even to live how did this happen? God did this God did this because the servant of God in order to be a faithful servant fruitful servant blessed it's not enough in all humility to work the Lord it is absolute precondition which is <coughs> And here's it's very difficult for a sermon though which is the uh, main point here is to make a steadfast decision of death and Paul being an absolutely skillful man in knowledge and endurance but it is expedient to stop hoping in himself but the hope to the one who is able to save him through death uh, because as in the Lord Jesus Christ days of his flesh with tears and cries he offered petitions and prayers to God the Father who was the only one who could save him from death through the horrible temptations and attacks of the devil to the servant Lord Jesus Christ and the Son of the Living God as well the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ Apostle Paul he had to learn to hope only in the Lord Jesus Christ and that hope to lead him in all ways to obey and submit to the voice of his Lord God who asked him leave now Ephesus and go to Jerusalem and the Holy Spirit was informing Paul midway that afflictions bondage hardships await Paul but uh, I care not nor do I consider my life 
valuable, precious to me, but what I consider my greatest joy as a servant of God is to complete my path and the ministry that God entrusted me to bring to completion. Amazing are the hardships of the servant of God. But dear brethren, the message today is that God gave me. There is a third class of people. There is a servant. There is a son. There is also the son. There is a servant. Hallelujah. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten one, did not consider something to be to hold on, to be equal to God. And thus, when he was asked, "Who is going to go from us to save the mankind and transform them not only to the image but also to the according to the likeness of God the only begotten son said behold I my God with joy I will go and do your will you know what God said to him behold my servant in whom I'm pleased behold my servant that I anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Behold my servant. Who is my chosen one? He's going to proclaim. Judgment of nations. A unique person. Son of God, the only begotten one, the one who came of the from the Father, the Word of God, coming from the Father, proceeding from the Father, He emptied Himself from the glory that He had as a Son, assuming the form of a servant, Assuming the form of a servant, and being in that form of uh, of a servant, he became like men, to whom he was sent to serve. And finding himself the form of men, that son, who emptied himself from the glory that he had, as God, now as a servant. He fulfilled his mission, humbling himself in one unique way that only a servant can do this, becoming obedient till death and death to the cross. And so, that son who became the servant who was in the son <coughs> who accumulated himself the affliction of the servant and his sonship serving God and those whom the Almighty God and his Lord and God sent him to serve and I repeat, that unique person who himself humbling himself in no ways gathering himself the absolute humility of a servant with the absolute blessing of the Son. He became a special person, type. A 
behold, here my beloved son and servant. You know what Apostle Paul said? I am an imitator of him. I imitate Christ. I want to resemble him to the son who became a servant. The servant who was a son and gathering himself by the Holy Spirit alone, the absolute authority and blessing of the servant. And he submitted that to the hum in absolute humility and the service of servitude, the commendation and praise of his father. And father said, excuse me, Paul said, you are you are enjoying actually God said they you're enjoying the blessing you because you're my son your father and my father he's able to enjoy the joy of the Holy Spirit because you enjoy the authority the royal authority I'm giving you I'm, you're enjoying the interceding authority that I'm giving you and offering you my glory as well and now all these things I want to says the Father for the Lord just to submit them under what was Christ the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ in absolute humility in absolute obedience and submission to him who transformed you to his children and he's sending you out with a mission that's a great mission unique only Christ there's no other person a unique person David and Solomon are different personalities but Christ is unique the son absolutely blessed servant absolutely submitted to his father this is invitation today do you want to to enjoy the blessing of the Son and to submit that blessing the service of your brethren the Lord Jesus Christ by know that this is gonna have a reward come here you bless my father and inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you for your children of God since the foundation of the world why because you became children of God and you became servants I was hungry gave me to eat who became hungry the least of the of my brethren i was thirsty he gave me to dr a drink i was sick and you visited me i was in prison you came to me i was a stranger he gave me lodging for the children of god who became servants and they didn't understand what this means because everything happens by the grace of Christ and the mercy of God you have understood up there on that day what it means to be in the church of the living God <coughs> the house of the living God which is the pillar foundation of the truth The, the church where the truth of God is found in. and then we're going to understand this now we can realize them do not know you blessing one of my father and the heaven the kingdom is prepared for you since the foundation of the world what do we do you serve the least my brethren 
Ah, servant, servant of the least, my brethren, you, the children of God. You, the heirs of God, the co-heirs of the Lord Jesus Christ, you served the least of your brethren. <coughs> you are not looking at yourselves, because the Word of God says, I cannot be in, invalidated the Lord Jesus Christ in the chapter that we read the Acts the book of Acts in chapter 20 <clears throat> it is more blessed to give than to receive Remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ that He said it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is what makes a person blessed. When, not when he receives and he enjoys the love of God the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, which are essential. And when he also, and not only when he receives your love, fellowship, and service, but blessed it is when you offer his love and his service. But as a son, with a perfect heart and willing soul, and as a servant, with a humble spirit, submit to the Word of God. And so the Apostle Paul, who is an imitator of Christ, he invites the servants of God to tell them things and truths that are unique revealing himself as a type, as a servant of God and bond servant of Christ, a type, a model, an example in the flock of God who has a boldness to confess, become my imitators as I be imitated Christ. <coughs> you know that you know on the first day I came to Ephesus the day, first day I came to Asia in which matter I lived among you did I enjoy the salvation God gave you or oh, your service to me but in contrast serving the Lord with all humility with a perfect heart and willing soul serving the Lord resulting after many tears temptations that happened because to me by the plotting of the Jews I enjoyed the, the blessing of God in the midst of you I served God as a son of God like Solomon with a perfect heart and a willing soul, but with many tears and temptations, which happened by the plot of the Jews, at the same time, I fulfilled the will of the Lord my God. I kept back nothing that was useful and helpful to you and your children so that I proclaimed it to you publicly and from house to house testifying to Jews and also the Greeks repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ 
And now, still as a servant of God, bound my spirit. I'm heading to Jerusalem according to the commandment of the Lord. Except, and not knowing the things that would happen to me there, even though the Holy Spirit testifies every single thing that changed tribulations await me. And I accepted the bond servitude of my father, so I'm going to serve him, because I became an imitator of Christ, who is a servant, but the unique only begotten son. I do not count my life dear to myself. Make us like that, Lord. What I count important is to complete the work that the Lord gave him to do as his child, the edification of the church, and the work that God entrusted me as a servant of God to help those who build the church, you, you the elders and the overseers that I invited you from Ephesus to Miletus to share words of God which we are reading today as the word of God which are so that they are acting upon us in our lives and so my work is completed with you and I'm not gonna see you again but you now children of God that decided to enslave yourselves the Lord to become elders and deacons and even more to us elders and deacons God chose you to baptize in the Holy Spirit because he baptized you and the Holy Spirit in order to prophesy serving God as children of God and your brethren as serving the Lord Jesus Christ thus the Lord gave you the Holy Spirit I didn't give you the whole my Holy Spirit in order to be full of the Holy Spirit but being of the Holy Spirit to work as children of God the church of God and to serve those who are children of God and build the house of God amazing the work and mission of the last church unrepeatable as David is unique so and even more is Christ and as Solomon is so are you unique in your mission only in the end in the end of David was the glory of God but the end of Solomon was the falling away from the will of God may God save us and preserve us and Paul continues now after my departure savage wolves will come in among you not sparing the flock and from among yourselves will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves to make them and I don't know what's worse somebody to deceive me become disciple of become of a man or to deceive other people and make them my disciples I don't know what's worse but both scenarios are dreadful may God preserve us how we consider and think as servants humbly with a humble and a contrite heart as children of God serving God a perfect heart with a willing soul otherwise let us quit because because many things are given to us and many things are going to be asked from us and if God entrusted many things to us and God is going to demand many things from us <coughs> 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 
it's better to make a decision not to come here again here is the Lord of Hosts here is not the a place where we are towing around don't come unless unless you're a servant of God and a child of God God cannot be mocked we're gonna reap corruption and the corruption God is offering cannot be mocked with don't fool around with God this is not a human church this is a church of the living God this is the house of the living God I cannot play or fool around with the things of the Lord whoever reaps in his flesh he's gonna reap corruption and that corruption is internal hell don't fool around with the things of the Lord especially now that the Lord is coming thus the Lord is bringing us to repentance in faith the Lord Jesus Christ and to receive to always be bound the spirit may God preserve us my child Solomon God is the one who knows the heart so he knows your heart God who knows all the thoughts what are you thinking what are we willing to do we have decided to do God knows and what do you have in your heart today what you have decided for yourself tomorrow thus repent believe in the gospel we turn to God and know God not you first I to know God and to say God you're a holy and I'm a pitiful a wretched man your love I useless that's what I am I repent Lord let's repent today brethren there is no one leave today self just fun I you and I today is the acceptable time today is the day of salvation today let us seek from God to cleanse our hearts to cleanse our thoughts so that we are willing the wanting of God and to do the commands of the Lord only God may transform us thus may we kneel down and pray to the Lord repentance and return let us kneel down to God before God let us repent to say Lord you with your mercy have mercy on us bring us the holies and say Lord let us live according to your will to want what you want and to do what you are commanding us to do And a brother is going to pray for everybody.